but you have this beautiful structure. What I was wondering was whether the process was always organic or whether at first you created like a schematic or a, a wireframe, there are different names I'm aware, to just kind of plan out how you see the structure of the website. Yes, there was an early wire scheme that uh, helped me uh, to have a goal for organizing this website. And it basically, it basically worked out pretty much as I organized it. But this organization, this wired diagram was the result of the evolution of all this content over the years since the 80s. Can you talk a little bit more sure. about the process? Well, the, the process is all tied up in, you know, the history since the 80s when I first started this, when he handed me the collection. The reason he handed me the collection was because filmmakers were trying to license his material for their films. And uh, he wanted me to help him with that. So I had to set up a structure to make that happen. You know, we actually went to a lawyer and set up the, the copyrights and he handed me the material so that I could actually physically get it to the filmmakers so they could use it, you know, because at that time there was no internet and it was all like film canisters and file drawers full of still photos. So that's how it started. Years went by and then the internet came up and I, the first thing I did was set up this static page with a phone number on it kind of thing, you know, and I'd let that go down the road a few years, maybe 10 years, that set like that. And, <laughs> um, but then I retired from the, the building trades, which is, you know, what I did for a living for before I retired. And that was 2011. And that's when I jumped into the internet and the process was definitely very gradual. I set up the Harvey Richards Media Archive and Estuary Press. Uh, as I developed my understanding, I kept adding to the websites. I created a Nina Serrano website and I used the navigation bars. And every time I put something on, it would be another link on those little drop down menus. <laughs> Finally, it was stuffed and unworkable and nobody could find anything. And I forgot what was on there. <laughs> uh, I work with a really great guy named Peter Hartsook, who's, the, who's my technical guru about how you do these things. Uh, I'm not a programmer. You know, I found WordPress, which had a way to go forward without having to do that. Last year, he said, you know, it's time you joined the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wasn't used to being outmoded in a mere decade. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I realized he was absolutely right. Peter Hartsook is the one who said I should bring it all into one site. So he went about the task. You know, first we created a clone site. Then he brought all the material from Estuary Press. Then he brought all the material from Nina. And then he brought all the material from the archive. And I work behind the scenes, just organizing everything, fixing broken links. And then I came to terms with the content in the old sites and the content on the new sites and where the holes were. And then I filled those holes, like the, the pages, the subject pages. You know, I realized that on the new sites, some of the basic pages in the old sites didn't show up. The writings that we did, the, the, the whole way it was grouped. So I redid that in the new site. I had to, you know, go to the old site, find the words, bring them in, find the, uh, the graphics and all the rest of it, and then recreate it in a new way using this uh, navigation system, which is so intuitive and works so well and uh, doesn't need much explanation. I mean, basically it's based on you know, how Macy's does it. That's sort of the, that's the sort of the history of it. This thing was a, um, a product of trying to master all the content that we have in the 21st century of bringing forth materials from the past, the history of, you know, that's in the Harvey Richards Media Archive and that the history that's in the Nina Serrano uh, website 
and trying to make it available and accessible to the public today. I realized that, you know, this is basically educational publishing. That's what this is. This is educational publishing, but it's multimedia and it's web-based. It's a window into the past. Your website is a presentation of your life and into an invitation into your life, an invitation into Harvey Richards' life. The most important thing to me was to do the things for my father's work because he photographed me at a time when I was just coming of age in the 60s. He photographed me getting arrested at the Sheraton Palace Hotel. He photographed me, you know, walking a picket line in front of the draft board the day I was supposed to report for duty to the, go to Vietnam and refused. I never, I didn't refuse. I just didn't go. It's a complicated story in itself. But he was there. He photographed all this stuff. And I used to call him up and tell him, hey, there's going to be a big demonstration on this day. And he'd show up with his car and his cameras and he'd film it. And then when he retired, he handed it to me. And I went, oh, damn, he's handing me my life. <laughs> he's handing me the things that make me who I am. And the other thing about this, when I graduated from high school, him and my stepmother, Alice, took me along on a filming trip to the Soviet Union, made a film about the conditions of women and children under a socialist society. Uh, and we traveled all over the Soviet Union. He made, then we came back. He made the films. The films were shown in the living rooms to people who could have an open mind about the Soviet Union, which was very few of us, if you remember those days. And then they went into deep freeze. And when I set this website up and I was making the videos, the preview videos of all of his films, I almost skipped the Soviet films because it the Soviet Union had just collapsed. And I thought nobody's going to be interested in this. But in the last minute, I said, Meh, what the heck, I'll do it. And so I made two shorts, put them up on YouTube, and they took off like a rocket. I mean, today, 550,000 people in 120 countries have looked at those clips. You know? <laughs> and it's still going on. It's like thousands every month are looking at them. And it showed me that there was tremendous interest in the conditions of women and children in a socialist world because the socialist countries provided a social safety net for women, childcare, education, retirement, hospitals, pediatrics wards. I mean, those are the things we filmed. Those are the things that are in the film. And I, I was a 17 year old kid going into a maternity ward. I was so embarrassed, you know, <laughs> I won't, is that where babies come from? Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, so I didn't get it for many years <laughs> until, you know, until lately. And then I understood that this war on women we're experiencing now has made these films about the social safety net that a socialist world provides women more important than ever. And so that again is a part of just my past. I mean, well, that trip to the Soviet Union made me a socialist my whole life. Putting that into the archive and into the estuary press um, is very important to me. And, you know, so that's one of the things like estuary press, I, uh, when the Soviet Union collapsed, I wrote a, a series called Napoleon and Gorbachev, The Collapse of Empires. And I, I compared the two. Uh, and, you know, that's the kind of ruminating I do on the Estuary Press blog and stuff. Um, so, you know, that's me. And so I have these thoughts. I do these writings. I put them up on the website and they're there. Uh, you know, I, I'm not uh, looking for a career. I'm not looking for anything. I'm just speaking my mind. And I think that's what we, that's what we need. And uh, we need to have our minds free from the empire and from the necessities of the political system that we live under so we can learn and create this new world that we want. And uh, doing that for myself was my contribution to what I think is happening to millions and millions of people. I just love these young people coming out, standing up for things they believe in. And uh, I wanted to give them 
the benefit of my experience and for whatever it's worth, you know. The last part of what you were saying speaks so directly to the importance of encouraging intellectual, original intellectual thought and truly creative thinking. That's one of the things that no longer being controlled by the gatekeepers of publishing has it done. I mean, people who want to write a book, they write their own book. The gauge is, does it sell? And then that's supposed to be why we write or why we create stuff, just because it sells. I mean, it'd be great to sell stuff, sure. I mean, but that's not what's in the souls of everybody. That's why our society should support the arts. You know, it should support the arts so that everyone's creativity can be brought forth. And we don't support the arts. We don't support education. And so it falls on individuals to use their own resources to do something that really the society should help us all with. I mean, like, you know what? My father used to make these films. And I, I asked him, I say, why are you doing this? And he said, you know, I could be using this money to sit on the French Riviera in the sunshine, but I don't. I do this. That was the example that I was left with. You know, he went, he went to Mississippi twice and made two films at the most dangerous time, 1963 and 64. He went down there and I said, Dad, why do you go down there and risk your life for people you don't even know? And my dad, not being a very talkative guy, he looked at me and he said, because I could. <laughs> Make of that what you will, you know. And what I make of it is just exactly this website. And I can do that. And so I did it. Mm -hmm. This website thing was like this great opportunity, which I think everybody has. All you got to do is mm -hmm. just do it. Mm -hmm. It's a great opportunity to say what was on my mind, to create an educational resource for people, when you were talking about how, as an afterthought, you posted the piece about women getting women and children being taken care of in the Soviet Union, that was so interesting in the context of promotion because it speaks to the role that intuition can play in how we regard our work. To me, it feel, that feels like it was so intuitive. It was an intuitive form of promotion. We can, you know, create a budget and put in promoting our products as part of that budget. And there is no guarantee. Do we want to focus, as you were just saying, do we want to focus, do we want the desire to sell to be the most important thing or is it the desire to create? So that's kind of one thing I wanted to say. But the other thing that I think is so important to acknowledge the father-son relationship between you and your father. When you were first telling us about your father and you said um, how that your dad asked you to help. And there is something about that where I'm thinking, because you said your dad was a, a man of few words and just kind of cer certain impressions we can have of relationships between fathers and, and son. I was actually trying to visualize your father saying, come on, son, help me with this. But I wish he had said like, that, you know, he didn't say that. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's the you know way what he you... said? He said, well, either you're going to take it or I'm going to throw it overboard in a gunny sack. That's exactly you know? <laughs> what I mean. That's so beautiful, Paul, because it really speaks to, I think, a relationship between fathers and sons that is so common. Mm -hmm. You know, and look oh, at this true. beautiful result. No, it, it's true. absolutely. You know, the thing is, it, 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 it was his way. And I understood it at the moment that he did it as a great compliment. It was very reaffirming to me as his son. You know, I, I, I wanted it, uh, you know, just, just because he said here and I wanted to say thank you. You know, that was it. You know, I mean, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I didn't know if I could do anything. I was hammering nails in those days. You know what I mean? These were weekend things that I did, you know? I mean, I had to build a room to put the stuff in. <laughs> so, uh, and then it set me on a path that I would have never, ever thought for myself. You know, and that he, I'm sure, had no idea I mean, 
When he passed away in 2001, neither him nor Alice could understand the web. I would say, hey, look at this. It's on the web. And they would go, eh, what? You know, it was like right over their head. They didn't get it. So well, everything that's happened in this website, the hundreds of thousands of people all over the world seeing this, the licensing, and all came because of this path that he set me on. And I had no idea that it would, it would work out. I, I had no idea that it would be something like this, you know. And this thing about the intuition and the Soviet uh, film, I really didn't understand what Alice Richards understood when she, you know, got this process going. I mean, her and my, her and my dad did it, but it was her. She understood the significance of this socialist social safety net for women and filming it created an archive that is just completely undeniable. I mean, <laughs> the comments that, that I get on, on YouTube on this, they range all over the place. You know, some people, oh, that's propaganda. Or other people are like, you know, what about the gulags? And, other, you know, you get all these kinds. Of, but the ones that, that get to me are people who are going like, I had no idea that there was like ordinary life that the, and you know, <laughs> that the, there, there were these possibilities. I've had a couple of professors contact me. Uh, one uh, from a university in Illinois who found that my father's work was a bridge between filmmakers from the forties and fifties to the sixties and seventies. He was like the only sort of like, people's filmmaker in a whole period of the McCarthy era where everything was just completely destroyed. And she was surprised. Nobody knew about him, you know? And so he played this sort of very pivotal role at a moment. And I mean, he did something that's now practiced by billions of people, you know, documenting your place and we'll, what is it concerns you, you know? So I, I feel like I was kind of lucky. As much, as much, I mean, I didn't know that this stuff would go like it would. I mean, it didn't result in any money. This is just strictly all about, you know, making something important available to people. That's the way I look at it, you know. But it does show me and it gives me a lot of motivation to continue. That's a part of understanding the vision of my parents. They understood so much, as did so many people on the left who were systematically excluded from schools and newspapers and educations and all these gatekeepers, you know, laughed them out of the world and not only laughed them out of the world, but, you know, physically expelled them. And now it's time for people to wake up and come back to these subjects. I just love these beautiful connections that are apparent because when you were talking about how your father and Alice just could not grasp what the internet and what the web were. The internet and the web have become your response to why do you do it? Because you can, as you said, your, you know, as you said, was your father's response because he could. And it becomes, you know, it's just so your work, your body of work, including the work of your father and Nina's work, are such beautiful examples of how these efforts to bring forth content, let's say, artistic content, different kinds of content, they just take on lives of their own. Anybody who has one idea, it's like, my goodness, I have one idea that interests me. Where could that go? And just make friends with the fact you won't know unless you follow it at least part of the way. You start out and then if you're paying attention, you learn things and you go further and you go in directions you never thought you would and you things happen that you, that surprise you. And that, that's definitely the case with this whole whole endeavor. And I mean, the attempt to renew this website is a, very much about trying to bring all of that sort of learning that has taken place over the years 
to the front. You know, because the old, the thing that was there was very, <laughs> it, it got, it got tangled up. It, it, it was, it was like it needed this so badly. And I've been, you know, for several months fixated and working very diligently at it. And people wonder, why are you doing this? And I can't really answer it, except that I can't stop. <laughs> and so, you know, it's one of these things. So the, the fact that this is, is now at fruition and I'm going to turn my attention to other things is, uh, you know, extremely rewarding. It's it's very much like having written a book or having um, a movie or something that you know was a big project that took a long time and involved a lot of stuff. So I'm I'm very very glad to do it, and I hope that it uh, hope that it serves. That's what I hope. Yeah. When you mentioned you compared your body of work or the work that's on your website to writing a book or making a movie, this whole notion of celebrity and how you were talking about, um, you know, you're not in, the, in this to make money if that happens, nice, or when it does, that's nice too. And then kind of putting that together with the professor you mentioned who was shocked that your father's work wasn't better known. When we look at how your father made a choice, he's, you know, you mentioned that he, just the example you gave of, yeah, I could be kicking it on the Riviera, but Riviera, but I'm going down to Mississippi to, to risk my life so that there's documentation of these human rights abuses. I think something that's so educational, so instructive in this opportunity you're offering through presenting your three sites that have now combined into one is, you know, what's it like to be less to feel less self-important? You know, what is it really like? Are you at all interested in how it feels to be gratified by doing something for at least one other person that's not related to money, that's not related to, to celebrity? And I just thank you for extending that, that invitation because there's a, tr a tremendous need. Because for those of us to whom it matters, just some form of graciousness, generosity, compassion, empathy, um, where that works is, my goodness, I can't think of anything more uplifting than to do something generous because someone else needs it, basically. When I was young and getting arrested, I sort of made basic social connections in life to people that have lasted my whole life. Not that I'm friends with everybody or anybody from those times or anything, but they, they oriented me and I've felt a duty and a obligation to all those folks, especially because radical dissent is never re rewarded. So this, I feel, is an effort to reward radical dissent. One of the most gratifying examples was a, a letter I got from uh, a fellow named Federico Correa, who is now in living in Mexico, and he's a very well-known artist. And he called me because he was going through my website and found a picture of himself picking carrots in a field. And he remembered my father coming there and photographing him. And, you know, there's actually blog posts about Federico uh, on, on the website and how he drew pictures. And he had this concept of a bird that came and witnessed what he was doing, picking those carrots. And, you know, I always thought, well, this is, you know, very much like my father. And he talked about how my father was very respectful and told him that they were doing very important work to get the food and, you know, was requested to take their picture. You know, he was not, you know, there to grab something from them. He was there in a different way and they recognized it as children. And then many years later, he finds his picture and he's also in a film. He's not, he's, he's in a film and in the photos. Other people I've had people say, my grandfather was a bracero and I wanted to, uh, you know, get these pictures and, uh, you know, understand what, what his experience was and how he got here, you know. And then there's other people, you know, from the peace movement who are like, hey, I was in that car. That's my, that's my car in that demonstration I was driving. I came along, I had no idea. And all of a sudden I'm at the head of 20,000 people 
protesting <laughs> some Vietnam War problem. And, you know, Dolores Huerta, that picture, the most important picture in the collection of her with the Huelga sign. You know, she had that picture up in her house. Her house was burglarized. She let me know. I sent her all the pictures I could possibly, that she would want, you know, I mean, just here, to have some more of these, you know. Um, so, you know, in a way, this is, uh, this, all of this work is for the, the dissenters and the radicals and the activists who have, who have done it. I, they're, they're my basic, my, my basic uh, cohort, uh, as it were, you know, they're the ones that, uh, that I'm doing this for. You know, I want to come back for a moment based on what you were just saying um, about what motivates us to, to do creative work. When I write something, I just believe that there is someone who's going to receive the work because that's my, context, my connection to the work. And I just want to say, having kind of gone from having a literary agent for a couple of years, uh, being rejected by Random House or whoever, and then saying, okay, well, that, you know, it's, that's an important experience, but I have these stories that just come through me that I must honor. That's like my calling as it's become over the years. And just the freedom that comes with that too, where you don't have to ask permission from anybody to just go ahead and really follow your heart, see where it takes you. Truly, congratulations on producing such an exceptional website. Thank Celebrate. you very much. You're welcome. And what this website is about is peace, justice, and a healthy planet. May we all find our way to it. <laughs>